time for games that were never released in this country to gain prominence again. It's true. Maybe, depending maybe. on who you ask. <laughs> maybe it will be, maybe it won't be. Who knows? That's what we're going to figure out, though, today. Here on episode 179 of the Season Lamb Checkup OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared. Joined as always by Doc Al and Ladium. Hello. We got a we got an old game that has been brought back to new life. AKA remake. Today. Well, it did wasn't remade today, but No, just just today. <laughs> Tony Hawk also leaked this on Twitter before it was supposed to be announced, so <laughs> Oh my god, Tony Hawk. Why? Uh, but first first we have to hear from our sponsors for this week. Okay. Al, mm -hmm. you're a fan of Save and Shine. I am a fan of Save and Shine. What if I told you there was new Save and Shine content available now? I'd be real stoked. Well, I'd ask where I could get it. Good thing that is the case. Yeah. Save and Shine, another story, out now. It's an expansion pack for Save and Shine. You can bring your characters from the original game in. You can make new characters. You can do whatever you want. But uh, it's a as, the, as the, the title of the game says, it's another story. It's a you know a what if scenario. What if this happened instead of the original game? What if your group gets split up at the end of the first season and they have to go against each other? That's what you're gonna find out. And save and shine another story. Mm -hmm. Out now. You can find it on the internet. <laughs> it's out there. If you go to ragbag.itch.io slash save, then you do a dash, and you do another dash, shine, do another dash, another, do another dash, story. <laughs> it's a lot of dashes. It is a lot of dashes. But it'll get you to where you need to go. Save and shine another story. Out now. It's real fun. Available from all of your favorite game retailers, except that's not true. Tell me no. on itch.io. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, play that. It's yes, fun. It is fun. Also, I got a little surprise for you. Da -da -dum! We're going to do some, uh, before we get into talking about Trails of Mana, the game we're talking about today. It's Trials of Mana, isn't it? I don't know. It's one of those two. It's Trials of Mana. I, I, look, I threw, I, 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 I shot my shot there, thinking <laughs> it was right. But I, I was just like, I, I'm going to be either right or wrong on this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we've, had Trail trials. Of, we've had Trails of Cold Steel in the brain today. Trail Trials of Mana. Uh, we're going to do a little <laughs> trivia. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guests for trivia this weekend, Ladium. Woo! Woo! Um, these are questions that were sent in to the Giant Bombcast today. Oh, and no. apparently were some for, from some dude's like online quiz group. It's all video game related. Okay. And it's it's there's a there's a majority of these questions that I think are gonna be up your alley. Okay. Like you will be an expert in some Am things. I gonna be ashamed if I don't know these? Um yes. Oh god. Well some okay. of them. Some of them you're probably gonna be like, I don't have no idea. Okay. And that's fair. All okay. right. Let's get into some trivia. All right, trivia Question time. number one. Upon its release, the Space Invaders port for the Atari 2600 was considered a killer app, driving sales for the console. What 1993 game became the killer app, driving sales of the CD-ROM drive, and for several years became the best-selling computer game in history? 1993? 1993. If you would think back to last week where we talked about games and years. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. It's like, which one was it? Um, hmm. You said it was CD-ROM, so it's computer game, right? It is a PC game, yes. Uh, Doom. Incorrect. Wow, really? Mist. Oh, I loved Mist. Question number two. Okay. For several years in the 1970s, Lila Zenter was the highest ranked woman at any U.S. video game company and was frequently frequently the public face of the arcade startup where she worked, including when the company's game Death Race sparked a moral panic. What company does Zenter work at? 
Wait, you said Death Race? Yes. Okay, um, I know this one. I know this one. <laughs> I even write about Death Race. <laughs> oh, man, what was it? Um, Exidy. Correct. Yay! Um, I, I remembered um, Carly wrote a paper that had a really good title that had, like, Exidy in it. Question number three. Mm -hmm. In Czechoslovakia in the 1980s, the oh, most God. popular personal computer owed some of its appeal to its small size, which made it easy to smug easier to smuggle into this country. What British-made computer was it? Oh, God, I don't know British-made computers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there's no way I'd get this. Just throw out a guess. Throw out a British-sounding PC that you've heard of. I, I don't even know. Like, what's a British PC in the first place? Like, I don't. I can't even think of what what would constitute a British PC. It was a PC that came from Britain. <laughs> I, thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo. Woo. No, but I know a lot of like U.S. computers, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know a lot of British computers. Are you, are you going to concede this answer? I will concede this answer. The ZX Spectrum. Yeah, I never would have guessed that. Question whatever number this is. Very lost count. Her Interactive released the first of their highly successful Nancy Drew adaptations... Nancy Drew Secrets Could Kill in 1998. Two years earlier, in 1996, the company released a game adapted from a book series that was later adapted into a supernatural teen drama that aired from 2009 to 2017. What was the name of this book series? Supernatural teen, teen drama. drama? You said this was 96? The game came out in 96. Okay, but the series was... On TV from 2009 to 2017. 2009 to 2017. Hmm. You said supernatural? It is a supernatural teen drama. Supernatural teen drama. Yeah, clearly I know my teen <laughs> Like I said, there's going to be some of these you're going to be like, I don't no, no, no. But wait, you said this was Her Interactive, right? Correct. Okay. Her Interactive. They did a lot of girls games they made the nancy drew games yeah they did i mean they had an entire line that was like mm -hmm. games for girls it was a big mm -hmm. movement anyway um supernatural god is this even a show that i would know of is this a show that i've watched i doubt i i don't know i would assume no but you've probably heard of it it was a show on the CW, I believe. C oh God, CW. <laughs> Which, yeah. Um. Yeah, I got nothing, man. The Vampire Diaries. Ah, okay, that was that was a show. I texted I... a friend who was really into that show about this game, and they were like, "What is this?" <laughs> Next question. I was really hoping you were going to talk about the American Girl game. No, fortunately not. Tragic. China, the United States, and Japan are the top three largest gaming economies based on revenue, followed by the Republic of Korea, followed by what European country? France. Is that your final answer? Does that mean it's wrong? Is that your final answer? <sighs> Wait, are we talking about people who make games or buy games i it's a great question and are we talking about europe like as a group or are we talking about like european union like how are we how are we breaking this <laughs> again up? good question um because you know it could it could be england it could be france you know it listen to your heart i'm gonna stick with france incorrect germany ah What post 2000s Nintendo console was known internally by the code name Revolution? It's the Wii. Correct. We got a we got a question about your favorite person in video games. Mm -hmm. 
Nolan Bushnell's first video game, Computer Space, was not released by Atari, the company he founded with Ted Dabney in 1972. What company released that pre-Pong video game? I just spit water all over myself. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? Nolan Bushnell's first video game, Computer Space, Space. was not released by Atari. Yes. The company he founded with Ted Dabney in 1972. What company released that pre-Pong video game? Um... Oh, man. I have this. I know this. <laughs> you should know this. I, yeah. I, God, I've been even working on this today. Like, I've been working on, I have, I just got it all over me. <laughs> um, it would have been their company that was before Atari, before they changed the name, right? Um, with the, like, S, lots of Z's and stuff. Is that what you're going with? Aren't they the ones who made that? See. Aren't they? Is that your final answer? Okay, are we talking about who published it or... Are we talking about who developed it or published it? There's a difference there. Uh, let me let me let's do some googling real quick. Also, if you can tell me how to pronounce that, that'd be rad. We're talking about the publisher. The publisher. Okay, that's Nutting. Correct, Nutting Associates. Uh, the development is, I have no idea how you pronounce that. But that's, <laughs> see, that's what I was thinking. I was like, is it that one? Because that was their pre Atari name. And I thought it was maybe a trick question, but that is kind of a weird question. Cause it does not specify developer or publisher. Yeah. Oh man. My pants are so wet. I will say, uh, Jeff from giant bomb went with the same answer you did. So he probably also got hung up on the same thing you did. <laughs> Oh, that he, he said it was... Okay, okay. So, you know, I wasn't alone that it was a yeah. weird question. All right, next question. Okay. I only knew about this because you mentioned it last week. Did I really mention this last week? Yes. Which leading video game designer and company co-founder was widely reported to have started designing her first computer games, including Mystery House Roberta at Williams. her kitchen, kitchen table? Yep. <laughs> I was like, oh, Mystery House. Al talked about that last week. <laughs> it's Roberta. Yep. In 1993, video games came under federal scrutiny during a series of congressional hearings on video game violence. While the hearings covered a number of games, there were two shown both during the hearings and press events. Name one of these two games, or you can name both if you want. Night Trap and Mortal Kombat. Correct! Prior to video game commercials, video games' commercial success, most video games were made to test or demonstrate computer power or function. These games were often developed on university campuses. The most famous of these was developed by a team of MIT students. Space War. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I told you, you would know these. <laughs> these are literally right up your alley. Which game console does what Nintendo don't? <laughs> God. Wow. Um, wait, game console? Game console. Okay. Um, I always just called it the Sega, but it actually has a real name that's not the Sega. It's true. Um, what is the actual name of that system? Because <laughs> I would say I'm going to go play on the Sega. It's like, you know, your mom who's like, oh, yeah, you're going to play on the Nintendo. Like, that, that was me with my you Sega. You got that new Nintendo? Um, okay. Because there was the Sega, Sega Genesis, Sega CD. What was the first Sega called? Or was it the Sega Genesis? Am I overthinking this? I think I'm overthinking this. Am I overthinking this? Listen to your heart. I'm not good at that, man. Last <laughs> time I listened to my heart, I was wrong. <laughs> um. Okay, what was it? It had a weird name. It had a really weird Remember name. Remember the, the slogan was, blank does what Nintendo don't. Huh? That's, that was the slogan of this console. Blank does what Nintendo don't. The I name just... of the console does what Nintendo don't. Oh, I thought it was just Sega in general. No. Hmm. 
All right, I'm going to go with Genesis. Correct. Yeah! <laughs> I was like, why? you were way overthinking this. It was not the Master System. Okay, that was the one that I was wondering. I was like, what that is was, the name of that one? The rivalry wasn't that hot yet. Okay. <laughs> Genesis does what Nintendo. Yeah, I just had to stop overthinking it. You did, yes. Final question. Mm-hmm. Which you've got, like, what? How many have you gotten? You got one wrong there. Two, three, four. You only got four wrong. Which ones did I get wrong? You got the first one about Mist wrong. Yes. Uh, the computer, the PC, the British computer. Yeah. The Vampire the, Diaries, and then and Germany. The European. Yeah. Yes. Okay. At their peak, arcades had significant influence on the larger entertainment industries, inspiring books, movies, and a 1982 song by the duo Buckner and Garcia. Pet that Man song Finger. hit number nine on the Billboard Hot 100 chart for the U.S. And, and it's it was, hot garbage. And it was called Pac-Man Fear. How dare you? Pac-Man Fever's terrible. How dare you? It's terrible. How dare you? Anyway, they I made, got that one right. Did yeah. you know uh, nearly 30 years later, they made a song for Giant Bomb? <laughs> it's, did they really? They really did. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> it's really, it's a, yeah. How do we get them hilarious. to make a song for me? That's a good question. Wow. I guess I have to stop tell, it's like tell, saying on the internet that Pac-Man Fever was terrible for them to actually want to actually make a song for me so eight out of twelve eight out of twelve that's not bad yeah i mean you got the ones that i knew you would get right <laughs> and some of them were a little bit out of my area so yeah um yeah i'm proud of myself there you go and you know there's also the owl overthinks everything <laughs> moments of like oh god is Good, it the publisher you- or the developer <laughs> When you were like, man, is it the, there was the Genesis, the 60, I was like, oh my god, she's going to get this wrong. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> well, again, I was even asking you about, like, publisher versus developer, so, like. I mean, that like, was fair, because, like, that question is very vague, and it's, and it's questioning, so. Well, and sometimes the company would self-publish, and it would be, you know. Something else entirely as well, so. Right, so. Yay, that was fun. I'm not a complete idiot. <laughs> you got the you got the stuff down that you're expert you're an expert in, so Yay! That's that's good. That good makes job. me happy. Alright, so you want to talk about Seikon Densetsu 3? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. You uh you played through that remake they did, I... not the the re release of the original Super no. Nintendo game that they put out, I think, with Secret of Mana and maybe Final Fantasy Adventure as well. Yeah, it came out um in the it is some mana collection, yeah. Collection of mana, or mana is how they say it in the game, but I always said it mana. Well, there's a lot of questionable things that they say in that, in that version. Oh, no kidding. Um, what does collection of mana have? The first three things, that's... That's Final Fantasy Adventure, Secret of Mana, and Seikon on Desetsu 3. Okay. Or whatever they called that first one. I think it's Final Fantasy Adventure. But I don't remember. It, they called it a Final Fantasy game, regardless. Except it's not a Final Fantasy game. It, yeah, it's Final Fantasy Adventure is what they titled it. Uh-huh. Anyway. Um, yeah, I played this remake. Mm-hmm. Um, just as... Um, so we're transparent. Uh, I only played through one route. I started to play through another route, and Jared's like, Al, no. Al, what are you doing? Please stop. Stop it. (laughs) So I've only gotten through the Duran and Angela route, um, where you take on um, the... Oh, what was he called? I didn't realize it was a Duran Duran song called Angela. (laughs) Oh my god. Um Who was it? Who was who were the heck was that dude? They each have their like Dragon Lord. Dragon Lord is the one that I fought. <laughs> um yeah. Very original name. Very, very original. Um so Angela, I, I played as Duran. I had Angela and then I also had Charlotte along for the ride. So that was my my main team on my first go around <laughs> and only go around <laughs> since Jared told me no. Um, so I guess 
that's one thing that's worth mentioning about this game is that there are a lot of combinations in terms of how you can play it, but right because I remember like playing fan translations of Seikon and Sisu three and then being like it's starting to be like hey which of these like thirty characters do you want to try and play and play as to start off and I'm like uh excuse me I think it's only six but <laughs> it feels like thirty um because the way that it's set up is that um. If you pick Angela and Duran, then you get their story. You can then pick a third character. If you pick um, Hawkeye and Reese, um, then you get their story, and then you can pick a third character. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is Charlotte and Kevin? Kevin, yes, the Beast Man. Um, and you get their story, you can pick a third character. Um, so uh, both times that I even attempted to play this, the first time I did Duran and Angela, Duran main player, Angela as the second or first companion, and then Charlotte as second companion. The second time I attempted at it, I was Reese as the player character, Hawkeye as my first companion, Charlotte as my third. Um, yep. Um, it's just a combination of how you go about this to get the stories, which the thing that stinks about it is that if you like pick wrong, then you don't get as many of like the interactive scenes of the story, which is kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. It's like you, if you were to pick like, I don't know, Duran and Reese as your first and second, like they wouldn't really have the same kind of story as him and Angela. But how are you supposed to know that? Well, you played the fan translation over the past 20 years. That's how you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I played the fan translation god what was it like 20 years ago mm -hmm. um i didn't remember any of it honestly yeah um there's a lot that's gotten into my brain in the past 20 years yeah of course uh so anyway like the gist of this game is similar to many other mana things and that there is a mana tree and there's a sword of mana and um whatever villain you're going against there's Dragon Lord, Dark Majesty, and Masked Mage. Yep. <laughs> Real original names here. Yep, yep. Um, so you you go against those villains who are trying to get the, the sword of mana to do whatever villainy that they want to do. Um, and they also want to unseal the eight uh, monostones so that um, they can release the Benevadalon ben Benevadons 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 is how you pronounce it um, big beastie guys and um, surprise when you beat them it's like ha 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 you were just feeding into the main villain Whoa. what um, this game is a, a lot game. of back and forth. <laughs> a lot of back and forth. Which, I mean, it is a game based off of a a game that came out in, like, the mid-90s, so. Yeah, I I don't remember a lot of, like, I don't remember Secret of Mana having so much back and forth, but, like, oof. Uh, I will say, though, in its to its defense here, it is a better remake than the Secret of Mana one. That's... Not hard. Pretty good. I mean, it's not hard, but you know that's that's a positive for it. It does have yeah. an auto save function, which is what Secret of Mana really needed since it crashed all the time. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm, I'm assuming performance wise as well, from like no more or maybe, maybe not as many crashes as Secret of Mana had and all that sort of stuff as well. I didn't have a single crash. That's yeah, that's definitely a lot better. Yeah, it's it's a lot better. Um. I did have the one instance where I got stuck in the tree that I told you about. Mm -hmm. um, that I was trying to jump and I got stuck into a tree and I had to do a bunch of like constant jumping, but also switching the character so that like some shifting going on <laughs> mm -hmm. to get out of the tree. But that was like the worst glitchy thing that happened to me. Comparatively, much better. Yeah, definitely. Um, it also looked a lot better, which is good. Um, a a big knock, though, is that the the voice acting in this. 
Yeah, like that was I I hadn't really heard much about this outside of like you I knew you got had it, but like the one thing that kept coming up from people that like I kept seeing was like, boy, the dub is real funky. Mm-hmm. Like I kept seeing people comparing it to like a '90s dub, and I was like, hmm, like how much is that? Is just people being dunking on dubs, or is it like legitimate? Yeah, I. I'm usually pretty defensive of dubs because I'm like, you know, it's really hard work. They right. did a good job. You're just like being a butt. Um, this, I would not even hesitate to give like a C minus. Like it is not that good. It's just a lot of like stilted delivery. Um, and then there's Elmer Fudd. Which, God, I, the, like, one really good healer character in this game, I was like, yay, I want a healer, this is great, and then she opens her mouth, and I'm like, oh, God, I want to do it, <laughs> this is terrible, <laughs> and, uh, like, I, I understand that it has to be some kind of, like, verbal tick that she has that they translated, but, like, good God, right. is it awful, um, and I sent you a video of it and you're like, so they had to do the subs like that too, huh? Yeah. It was, it's man. Ugh. It's not great. Um, she turns like all of her R's into W's and Charlotte's an interesting situation. She's supposed to be like a half elf. And so they start off the game being like, she's 15, but she doesn't look like it. And I'm like, oh my God, here we go. <laughs> Um, and then she walks up and starts saying, like, let's go! And I'm like, oh, no! <laughs> Am I done? Um, which, yeah, when you're in the middle of a serious moment and she starts saying wets instead of lets, I'm like, oof. Or, like, um, I won't cry anymore. I'm like, what are you doing? Why? It was, it was literally every time she opened her mouth, I'm like, please stop. Please stop. Please stop talking right this second. She never did. She never stopped talking. Kept going and going and going. Yep, going and going and going. One thing that was great, though, uh, and I think I mentioned this very early on when I was playing it, is that again? I was playing as Duran, and there's a part very early in, in his story, which um, he is an orphan, be surprised, um, and he is raised by his aunt. And so his aunt and his sister, his little sister, come out and are talking to him, but his aunt ends the sentence with Duran, and then his sister starts it with Duran. So it's like Duran, Duran, and I'm like, yes, this is why I picked you. <laughs> <sighs> Mirrored life. Um, I'm trying to think of like where I should even begin to talk about plot. <laughs> um, so the whole thing with Duran is that like he, uh, I'm not gonna go through like a whole play by play of this, that'd be insane. Uh, he is an orphan. His dad was the hero king's like a right hand man. His name is Loki. Loki died in a fight against the dragon king. Is Loki looking at you like, why are you keep mentioning my name? He is. He is very much looking at me like that. He did every time they mentioned the name in the game too. He's like, hmm? Hmm? who's saying hmm? my name? Who's saying um, my name? <laughs> I'm Loki. I'm sleep. <laughs> Um, so his, his dad is dead and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a, the best swordsman in this country. I'm gonna be the best knight and I'm gonna protect the hero king like my dad did before me. Um, and so basically immediately after that, the, the country that he's in, I, was it Valsena? Valsena. Uh, is attacked by the Crimson Wizard. 
Um, and everybody dies but him and the Hero King. All right. And so Duran's like, all right, well, I have to get stronger because I have to take out that Crimson Wizard. That's all that's going to happen. So, you know, he goes off on his journey. Uh, meanwhile, Angela is the princess of Altena, does not wear pants, and um, her mom is working with said Crimson Wizard and is trying to sacrifice Angela because she can't use magic and she wants to uh, use her to like do something with the, the monostone, I don't know, so that they can not have snowy world anymore. Um, Angela freaks out, you know, as you do when your mom's like, time to sacrifice you. Uh, it just like disappears. She magics herself away uh, and ends up finding Duran and they party up together. And like I said, the first like good third of this game, like the first few chapters is just like going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between these villages trying to figure out like where are all these little um what the flip flop are they called? Uh you get fairy who inserts herself into your body. Yikes. Whoa. Um, so she, she is the, the hope, like you, whoever you play is now her host. Um, and what are those little critters called? Oh, the spirits. That's a good name. It's not, uh, you have to go and get like all the elemental spirits. And so there's a lot of traveling between different towns and like, there's even one instance where you start in the town, you go to this cave area you fight a boss then they're like oh we need to go back to the town you go back to the town talk to somebody they're like oh we can't do anything until you have this fuel so then you go back to that cave again and then go inside the cave get the fuel after fighting another boss and then head right back to that town i'm like this could have been streamlined guys no all right it's really annoying <sighs> um so you gotta go and collect all the little spirits and um they're gonna help fairy open up the sanctuary of mana um because she is too tired to open it herself uh, which is relatable um so once they are able to open that sanctuary uh hey surprise the villains are here Woo. Not the villains. The villains. They're going to invade. Um, also, they, they take your sword of mana that your main character gets. Tragic. Not my sword of mana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do say mana in the game. I was like, whew. Um, so, once you trade the sword, like all those monostones shatter and then all the benevidons are released and you have to go fight those guys which are literally in the exact same spots where you just were getting all those spirit elementals so there's a lot of recycling here <sighs> and um like one of the mechanics of this game is that it has um like class changing mm -hmm. which usually i love class changing i think it's great um but here it's very specific in the sense that um, the first class change you can't do until you're level 18. Once you're level 18, you choose either light or dark. And then whatever you pick from there leads to whatever skill tree you can go from later on. So level 18 is your start one. Level 38 is your next one. But you also have to have an item that matches the, um, the class that you're trying to go to. And you can only get that item from question mark, question mark, question mark seeds that are not super duper easy to find. And you plant them in the item pot and they're random. Great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, trying real hard to get uh, Angela's. I forget what class it was, but I wanted Angela's class and I just kept getting the bottles for Charlotte after Charlotte had already been changed. I'm like, 
I, I don't, I don't need this. Please stop giving me this. I don't <laughs> need this anymore. Please just give me some of Angela's. And finally, like I gave up. I was so tired of trying to get it and like grinding for those seeds that I was like, you know what, Angela, I got this thing for you. You're going to be this character, whether you want to or not. So she got to be a different class than I actually wanted her to be because <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> uh, um, which leads us to uh, teens dress badly the game. But you don't mean we're, we weren't here the whole time? We were. I mean, if we talk, if, <laughs> Duran starts with an ab window, which is ridiculous. Um, especially when you're supposed to be like, training to be the top swordsman you're really gonna have an ab window with all your like squishy organy bits exposed maybe you're just like really and you're really you just want to show off maybe but like like look at all know, the work it, i did i, I want to you know i'm gonna let the people see it those abs don't deflect swords <laughs> that's what you think <laughs> um so he has the ab window angela is wearing a leotard she has no pants on she has heels and like this weird cape thing and her boobs are out which who's shocked um and she's a princess and like who let this princess that princess who let princess. This, who let this princess Excuse out of the house me. with no pants who let this happen um and the charlotte just kind of looks like she's wearing like a sack it's like a jester sack pajamas outfit i don't know um but as you progress you know you just keep getting outfits and none of them are good none of them not a single one i did not find one that i was like wow you know what that's pretty decent <laughs> um and that includes the fact that a they put in an extra dungeon in this um that I beat the game and I was like, yay, I beat it. I'm done. I'm, I don't have to do anything else. And then it's like, here's a post credit scene. And I'm like, oh no. And it's like, oh, by the way, you should load up your, uh, your file here and do this final dungeon. <laughs> I'm like, what? No. So I load up the file and I get in there and it's like, you need to go talk to this book. <laughs> All right. Guess we're going to go talk to this book now in Valsina. Valsena. Um, so you go talk to the book and he's like, I really need you guys to take down this witch, but you can't do it at your current class. You guys need to be class four. And so he tells you that you have to get these certain spheres in order to become class four. Um, which leads to annoying little quests of like, hey, Time for your character to fight one on one with something, and good luck. Um, especially when you haven't played as one of them. I was so happy when I had to play as Charlotte, and I still got my tea. I'm like, oh, thank God, I couldn't have done this with Charlotte on my own. <laughs> um, but Duran and Angela had to do one on ones, and I almost died as Angela a few times. Um, but then you change into your class four, and it's like, okay. And then you do a very long dungeon that never, ever ends. Ever. And then as a stupid, Some say you're still doing it today. <laughs> I felt like I was, honestly. Like, it did not feel like it was ever going to end. And, like, why? Why are we doing this? And then it decided, like, hey, you know all those bosses you fought? You want to fight them again? I'm like, you're really going to do a boss rush on me right now? You're really going to do that? Is that what you're going to do right now? Is that really what you're going to do? Yeah, okay. That's what you're going to do. And I almost was done. I almost was just done right there. <laughs> I'm like, do I really need to finish this? Do I? Do I even care at this point? Like, you know, the story is pretty, like, 90s generic -y in the sense of, like, hey, you know, here are your, your party members, and they got to take down the big bad and, you know, save their parents or, in the one case, like, free Loki spirit. Um... You know, it's it's not really anything that's like mind blowing story wise. <laughs> um, you know, your your uh, spoiler alert: fairy becomes the new goddess of mana after the goddess of mana is like destroyed with a tree. Whoa! Whoa! Right? Crazy! Who would have thunk? Um, 
but also Mana is just gone at that point. Because she's like, I have to incubate myself to become the goddess. There's no Mana anymore. Um, which leads to one part that I was like, wait, what? And like, I'm pretty sure it was an actual out loud wait what moment for me. Uh, they have Duran and Angela and Charlotte all hanging out on the balcony of Angela's castle. And Angela's like, oh man, you know, I was just getting good at doing magic. And, you know, now I can't do any of it because Mana's all gone. But I got something that's changed anyway that I'm pretty happy with. And it's like winking at Duran. And he's like, wait, what? And I'm like, wait, what? Because there was zero indication whatsoever in this game that there was any romantic interest there. And she's like hitting on him at the very end of the game. Like, wait, what? He's an idiot. You know he's an idiot, right? I thought she was going to pull out the gun or something. <laughs> no, I have magic, but I got these. No magic, no problems. <laughs> Where would she even keep them in her leotard? You don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> Um, but there is zero indication that there should be, like, anything romantic there at all. At all. There's no hints at it. There's no dialogue. There's nothing that I saw. And that's very, it's just like, oh, by the way. And then, you know. Got nothing better to do. He's confused. And I'm confused. So at least I wasn't alone in my confusion. Ugh. It's like the most shoehorned, ridiculous romance that ever. <laughs> Which I'm sure is probably like that in the original too. Because that seems like a very like early 90s thing to do. Or mid 90s. Yeah. Uh, to be like, oh, by the way, the girl definitely has to be in love with this like random stupid dude. Of course. He saved the world. Duh. Um, but he's an idiot. And even he doesn't pick up on it, which is great. Um, cause I didn't feel as terrible when the guy who it was directed at also did not understand. He <laughs> <laughs> was like, buddy, I'm in the same boat as you. Yeah. I was like, when did she start liking you? Why did she start liking you? And what point in this game were you actually likable? Was it the ab window? Is that what did it? And there you go. <laughs> She's like, oh man, that ab window, huh? Bet I could like throw a marble and it would, uh. Just <laughs> right off of it. Um. <laughs> Throw a marble and it's like a pachinko game. <laughs> Knock somebody's eye out. God. Why am I like this? Um, so I don't know. I, I, I know the gist of the other characters' stories because like um, Reese is a Valkyrie and um, her little brother goes missing and her um, town uh, I think it's like a fort it's not really a town I don't really know how to describe it um, Laurent is the name of it um, it's taken over it's taken over by uh, Hawkeye's nation which is Navarro and um, I mean Marvel. Yes. Um, and also Hawkeye just kept showing up in the other route, like, "Hey guys, what up? I'm here for two seconds. Goodbye." And I'm like, okay, I guess. Fine. Um, and he is a noble thief. He lives in Navarro, and Lavarl is led by the Lord Fl Flamcon? Flam Flamcon? I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, it doesn't that even matter. A, that is a name. It doesn't even matter because the dude is like a puppet anyway because this lady with uh, large uh, Himmerhammers <laughs> is Isabella. Isabella is controlling the king and also like shanks his son and it's fine and blames Hawkeye and then Hawkeye's friend this little kitty cat blows up the cell and conveniently the cell that Hawkeye was in has a tunnel that connects to the cat's house how nice 
Um, so I assume that like their entire story is like, hey, we got to figure out what this Isabella thing is about, and we got to figure out like where her brother is. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it. I know that Isabella is Belladonna. I know that uh, she is all about dark majesty and um, wants to go to the bone zone with him, I guess. He's not interested. Um, and then Kevin is a beast, beast man and is exiled, I think, after like his best friend is killed. That's two best friends that are killed in this. Pretty intense. Um, we don't need to be in this game. Apparently one of us would die. And he's a werewolf. I, yeah. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, and he's paired with Charlotte, who um, is looking for Heath, who is a cleric. No, she's um, looking for a Heath bar. <laughs> <laughs> um. And they are against the masked mage. But, um, which the thing with Heath, I was showing you, like, they couldn't have made this girl, like, a little bit taller because at the very end of the game, she's like, Heath, you're alive! And, like, goes and just, like, puts her hands and her face, like, right in this man's crotch. And I'm like, girl, back up. What are you doing? What are you doing? Um... Which I showed it to you, and you're like, oh, I thought that was a woman. Yep. <laughs> um, but no, Heath is a dude. Heath is like a teenage dude, I guess. Um, and, you know, Charlotte's just all up in his junk, celebrating, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Is there anything special I should say about this game other than, like, here's the gist of it? The. Um, I mean, it was kind of neat seeing some of these things, like, in full, not sprite form. Right. But, man, I don't know. I got so annoyed playing this game. Do you think the novelty of this remake was more of, was more just on the, in the line of, like, this was a, this was the game that never came out over here? Yeah, I do. Um, which, oof, I will say one positive of it, mm -hmm. music's pretty good. Um, and one neat thing about it is that you can switch between like the new re-recorded versions of it or the original versions of the songs. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. Like every once in a while I'd go into a different area and I would like switch between it to see like, which one do I want at this point? What do I like better? Um, something that isn't as good, though, is New Game Plus. <laughs> and I learned this in a weird way. Uh, if you start a New Game Plus, you have to start with, like, different characters, obviously, than what you had previously, mm -hmm. um, if you're going to get a different story. Those characters that you do not play as at all start level one. They have no abilities. They have nothing. They don't have any weapons. They don't have any armor. Um, but the, the one thing that they do have is that you can equip some of the skills that the other characters had from um, your previous game, including one that gives you 300% XP, which makes it a little bit easier to deal with. But then like, once you finally get your third character, if you pick somebody who you've played as previously, they just come in at whatever level you had them at. Um, the issue with that is that, again, they don't have the abilities. They don't have the class that they had switched into, which also means that in the class that they did not switch to, um, like the, or since you can't switch those, you can't use the armor or the weapons in your original class. You can only use it if you go back to that class four. Which is seems like a waste. Stupid. It's like it's the same freaking flail that she was using the whole dang game. Why can't she just use this flail? Why can't she put on a robe? I don't understand. It's too difficult. Ugh. 
Um, so that was really frustrating. And then I'm like, all right, cool. Charlotte's level 73 running around with like baby level flail because I can't equip the other ones to her and she doesn't have any of her abilities. And I can't class change her until, you know, we get to a mana stone at some point or mana stone at some point. And that takes a while because we have to go back and forth and back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. And I'm like, So yeah, it is a, it is a game. It is a video <laughs> game. That's true. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, for the most part, I was looking at the Wikipedia page and it didn't get like really bad reviews or anything. Um, it's, it's, just not, there. it's not a bad game. It's not, like I said, it's not Secret of Mana. That was a very bad game. This this <laughs> seems like a game that, like, you'd play through and then that's it. Yeah, I mean, like, the whole time that I was playing it, I was complaining, like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to play this anymore. I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to go back and do a route. And then I try to do it, and then you're like, no, don't do this to yourself. You were miserable the first time around. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you can attest to this that the whole time I'm just like, nope, no, no, this is taking too long, this is too much, I don't want to do it. I was You did not seem like you were having a good time. I was not having a good time. Um, I know that one of the things that people talked a lot about um, was that the Switch version wasn't as good, which is what I played, and I didn't really notice an issue, so I don't know what that was about i don't know if like it was patched and so it was fine or if i just missed something because i'm a dumb dumb it might just be the general thing of like it probably doesn't look as good and may run a little bit worse than the ps4 version yeah it, it didn't like affect any of the gameplay so it didn't bother me like if it slowed down things i'd be like Ooh. or if it had like the super jaggy edges like uh the cold steel 3 right um, it didn't have any of that, so it's like you know, it's it's a fine passable version if that's what you want to play. Um, although, like, I can't really can't really say that I recommend it. Yeah. Even after I put like what forty hours into it. Probably. <laughs> Man, I can't believe I did that to myself. I can. Okay, yeah, fair. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's legit. That's me. <sighs> um, but now it's out of your system. It's out of my system, literally. I had to take it out of my system in order to play Mario Maker Two with you the other day. So it's literally. Like, this is gonna stop me from going back to it, and I was like, "That's right." <laughs> so it is literally out of my system. Um, but yeah, like it's a fine game. I don't, I don't hate it. I would not play it again. Yeah. Um, they uh, they did take out, like, it, it originally had multiplayer, and it does not have that anymore. Hmm. Um, in That's the same vein it, as, like, how uh, Secret of Mana had it, that, like, you could have two people with a SNES controllers, and one would control one character, and one would control the other. Mm -hmm. It was the same way with this one, but which is why they had, like, main character and then companion one. Right. Um, and the companion too was your your computer character, but um, they took that out entirely. So if you were someone who had not played this game before, mm -hmm. would you recommend the remake or the original? Ooh. Considering you could also, you, if you bought the original, mm. you would be getting. Secret of Mana and Final Fantasy Adventure as well. Right. I mean, like, that would lean it heavily towards that version, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know that there's anything that's, like, particularly amazing about this one that would make me say, like, yes, you need to play this version. Like, yeah, it looks nicer, maybe has some quality of life changes, but, like, 
ultimately, ultimately, is it that different? Um, and really, I, I, I'm super duper fine not seeing like ab windows and Angela's butt hanging out. And the voice acting. Oh my god, you, that's one major point towards the original version is that like while the text is that way, you don't have to hear someone speak that way. Yeah. Oh my god. It's a pretty solid uh solid thing. Yeah, that is a big check mark in that column. Like mm -hmm. don't have to hear Elmer Fudd? Cool. Perfect. Like, oh my god, I just kept sending you videos like listen to this child. It's awful. And also it was really funny that there was a character named Loki and Loki's like, What are you doing? Why are you why are you talking about me? Who, Who is keeps that? talking about me? Who is that? I'll why fight are you talking him. about me? Loki was the greatest warrior in the land. Weren't Some you say buddy? he still is. Weren't you buddy? It's like, please, I'm trying to sleep. I'm trying to sleep on your D and D bag. What are you doing? Stop Get talking. away. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap this up. Yeah. Yeah. Rant City. Woo. I could talk about how I bought a Neo Geo Mini, but it's just I played I've played Garo Mark of the Wolves like two times in a, two times already. So I really that's enjoyed, about it. I really enjoyed your videos of that, though. That was really uh, fun. Patreon people, we're going to have something special in, in store for you. Yeah. That, re, that, re, that, that is uh, in line with the Neo Geo Mini. So look forward to that sometime there's a lot of setup i'm gonna have to do with that so it might be a while but but it is going to happen it's gonna happen but uh yeah that's gonna that's gonna wrap this episode up so if you'd like more from us go to seasonalimacheckup.com or sac.cool where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like seasonalimacheckup checkup and jared now watch you can also find columns reviews on the site as well if you'd like more from my lady go to anladium.com she's got columns reviews find us on twitter twitter.com slash anime checkup and you can support us on patreon patreon.com slash s-a-c-o-v-a buy us a slice of pizza get access to all of our podcasts early unedited and some bonus stuff as well next week we will talk about something hopefully that was more fun <laughs> oh my god <laughs>